recorded a video for three weeks. I think it's time for a part two. So this is going to be part two in my series of modding IL2C's PP Unity games. Um, I'm going to go over getting offsets with Ida, uh, overriding bool functions because somebody wanted that in the comments that I read, and uh, people want ESP, but it's kind of complicated. I'll m I might get into it into like maybe the next part. Um, and also, if I sound sick, that's because I am. So. Yeah. So first, I'm going to dump the game again. I'm going to be using that same source from the part one video. So if you haven't watched part one, you should watch it. Let me redump the game. Every time the game updates, you're going to have to redump it because the offsets will change. And they did update Devourer. So let me get my dumper. External tools. IL2 dumper. GUI. Devourer. What is this? The executable. So in Devourer, the executable will be your game assembly. Global metadata will be in here, the IL2CPP data, and then output directory should just be the game folder. So you can just dump it. And while this is dumping, I'm going to go open Ida Pro. Ida. If you don't know where to get Ida Pro, just, uh, <coughs> you know, you know. So you're going to open Ida64 because it's a 64-bit game. If you're dealing with a 32-bit game, then you're just going to use the regular Ida.exe. And I'm going to disassemble a new file. My game assembly. And then if you get this, just click on OK. It's just a warning. Default settings are fine. You don't need to do anything here. Press OK. Oh, I sound so bad. I know I do. So this is going to load, this is finished dumping so I can close this. And then you're going to get a bunch of stuff that looks like, I, I don't know, it's, it's going to look crazy. Basically in the top left you want to go to edit, you want to go to segments, free base program, and just type in zero. Click OK wait for this to finish and then oh yeah you have to have Python installed for this I forgot to mention that make sure you have Python installed go to file script file and then go to where your steam game pretty much is the folder because that's where your dump is gonna, you're gonna do Ida with struct pi 3 this one open it select script.json not string literal script and then IL2CPP.h. Then it's going to run a script. Or it should run. Oh, it froze. It's going to do that. Yeah, it says running Python script. This takes like, I'd say a good five minutes to run. So I'm just going to cut to when it's finished. Okay, it's finally finished. Uh, that took a while. So once it's done, you're going to see all this stuff in your functions window. Or you might not see it. Some, some of the stuff will be still like just random numbers and others will be named those names are basically the same as looking at the script file and searching for a function so if you want to search for a function you can press Control f and then you basically search for what you want so uh, i'm going to make an unlocker pretty much because that's a bool function that's what one of the people in the comments wanted i think it's has robe has Oh yeah, it's lagging. It's doing that because it's analyzing, as you can see down here. To stop it from analyzing, you can click on this yellow thing right here, this yellow little circle. Click on that, and it'll say AU disabled. And it shouldn't lag anymore, it shouldn't freeze at all. It has robe, I think, or like robe, So I forgot what it is. It's like a robe something. Let me make sure. Select robe, unlocked robe. Uh, no, it's like something to do with has or like owns. Robe unlocked, Christmas robe unlocked. Get robe. Set robe. Interesting. Robe.
hope unlocked. Is it like has? See, this is like the worst part. It's looking for. Oh yeah, here it is. Is robe unlocked? And it's a bull. So, if you did everything properly, let me rebase one more time. So edit segments rebase zero, just to make sure. And yeah, is robe unlocked? So this little number right here next to your function name, that's your offset. After the zero, after the last zero and these zeros, this is your offset. And you can see that it highlights all these right here. So this is the function itself. And these are the arguments. So it has one, two, three arguments. So I'm going to grab this offset, copy it, control C. Go into Visual Studio. This is the source from my last video. It still has the stumble guys code in it, but it's easily convertible. So has skin offset. I'm just going to change that to this. And I'm going to rename it is robe unlocked offset. And that's a long name, but whatever, because the function is called is robe unlocked. And then we're going to do has no not has is robe unlocked underscore o for original you can name this whatever you want as long as you just remember the name to put down here and it takes in a d word pointer because that's a pointer a string so a const char yeah this is right and method info pointer so d word pointer yeah this is already right i don't need to change this i need to change is robe unlocked underscore h and then I'll just do robe uh, ID or something robe ID or like robe I'll just do robe because it's just just a name and method also I'm going to show you guys how to actually print this stuff to console because the way I did it in my last video was wrong you can't just add 10 to it you that is a part of it but you can't just add 10 and forget it so let me remove this. Actually, no, this is fine. This is fine right here. I'm just going to edit the code above it. So to make it print out the name, you need a buffer and char uh, name. I'll just do 256 bytes. Basically, this buffer is just what's going to hold your variable because you're going to convert the robe to a wide char and the wide char will hold the name itself. You'll see. I know it's like I'm talking in enchantment table, but you'll, you'll see what I mean. So destination, this is wide char. Uh, I forgot what this is, honestly. I'm not even gonna act like I know. Wide char to something. Yeah, so, something like that. I'm not even gonna act like I remember. Um, name is the destination. Because you can see destination source max count. So the destination is our name buffer. The source is whatever you're converting. So we're converting the robe. Robe uh, plus 10, which is 0xA. Because 10 will point to the actual name. And it says you can't convert it to a wide char T. So you need to cast it as a wide char, wide char T. So you need parentheses here. Oops, I can I put the whole thing in parentheses. You need parentheses behind it, and then you need to put w c h a r underscore t wide char t uh, pointer, which would cast it, and then make a comma. The max count is basically the size. So we're going to do size of of uh, name. So the max count would be the size of your name buffer right here, which is 256. And then a ending thingy, whatever it's called. And then you're going to print out your name without, like not, you're not gonna add it anymore. You're just gonna print out your name. <coughs> so basically what this did, we made a buffer to hold our name. We converted the name plus 10, which is the actual name, so plus 10 it's it will point you to the actual name. I don't know. I can show you in memory if I would print the memory address. Let me see. 
I can show you what I'm talking about. I'll go more in depth. Why not? So I'll do print f um, robe robe address uh, pointer yeah, and then quotes robe yeah, and then let me. I have to make this a pointer. You don't have to do this. I'm just doing this for the sake of showing you what I'm talking about. Because when I say plus 10, you probably don't understand why. Like, why am I doing plus 10? So this is to show you why. But this will actually print the name. Now, down to our hooks. We need to change our hooks back to the actual stuff. So Haskin Original will become Is Rob Unlocked Original. Haskin Offset would be is robe unlocked offset has skin hook would be is robe unlocked hook and then we're going to change this offset again and we can build it and test it so we open the valor hopefully it doesn't open my vr headset sometimes it does that that's kind of loud that's kind of loud so we're going to get process hacker. And we're going to go to Visual Studio to see where our... Oh, it failed. Identifier not found. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. To use this? I forgot to say this. Oh, wait, let me mute the game. Let me mute. Da, 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 da. Okay. Basically, to use this, you need to be on C++, uh, I think 17 it is, or, actually no, wait, what am I missing? Did I do something wrong? What am I missing here? Uh, that's a little weird. Yeah, this should work. Did I do something wrong? All right, let me figure out what's wrong with this. Okay, I'm back, I figured out what's wrong. So basically, this function right here is a part of a library called stdlib, and I didn't include it in my project, so let me do hashtag include uh, stdlib. <coughs> oh my god, I'm like dying right now. And I'm gonna try to build it. It says it's unsafe. To fix this error, just go to your project, right click it, go to properties, Go to C slash C plus plus down. Go to preprocessor and then click the down arrow on here. Make sure you're you're on your like build configuration. So release x64. Make sure you're on the right one. Edit and then just type in underscore CRT underscore secure underscore no underscore warnings. Press OK. Press apply. Press OK. Try to build it again. <coughs> oh my god, dude. And yeah, it's good. It built. So in developer, I'm going to inject my DLL. It built right here. So let me copy this. Devour, go to back to process hacker. Inject. And then devour test. It shouldn't print anything yet, but if I go to single player. And I go to outfit. Oh, did I do something wrong? Did it even unlock anything? Oh, no, it didn't. Okay, this is interesting. What did I do wrong? See, it's good that I make errors and actually show them because I can show you guys how to fix your errors. So, the deal injects, uh, it goes to the main function. The main function will init, and it does min hook initialize, creates a console. And then it hooks the function. The function gets hooked. Print F. Hmm. What is wrong here? Maybe game assembly. Maybe it's this part. Because that's giving me a warning. Let's see. 
except it's running. I don't think I printed anything, so yeah, it shouldn't show anything right now. That's weird. Or am I hooking the wrong function? Is it is this function just not called? Maybe that's what it is. I might be hooking the wrong function here. So this is my base. Well, not really a base. Well, this is basically just my entire like cheat thing for this game. Let me make sure that I did this properly. Is rope unlocked? It looks right. Did I didn't I update this too? Seven four B C zero. Oh, seven four A. Hmm. It looks like I got the wrong offset somehow. Is this the right offset? Zero X. Did Ida give me the wrong offset? Ooh. You're about to find out. I think I think that's what it was. It was hooking, but it wasn't calling the right function. So yeah, maybe that's what that was. Let me uncomment this. See, errors are good because I actually get to show how to fix them. So let me open Devour. I don't know why I didn't open when I tried to open it the first time. Let me rebuild just to make sure. Alright. Game's opening. Devour.exe. And it should have hooked there. Yeah, there we go. So it's going to be weird because I didn't make a new line on the stuff. But, uh, yeah. Let me, uh basically try to zoom out and make sense of this. So robe address is this. Haskin called with skin ID default robe. So it checked if I had the default robe and it, I returned true to it. Default robe, default robe, because I have the default robe selected. So if I go here, yeah, everything's unlocked. I can select them. Uh, I'm going to go found all the Christmas presents. Did my game just crash? Oh. Oh, because I have this selected, I have to make free it. Okay, has skin called with a skin ID, Christmas robe, Christmas. Okay, so it checked it a bunch of times. Uh, where's the first call to this, right here? It would be way better if I just did it in a new line, but I'm just stupid and didn't do that. So, this is the Christmas robe, right? I'm going to show you what I mean. Default robe this is this is part of the last thing address is right here so this is all this is all one thing so let me go into my code to show you what this is showing us basically so this is the function that we hooked let me just move this down so when this function is called once we get the address robe address oh wait, this is one line then it's this one it's this right here yeah, see, if I made a new line, it would be so much easier. But yeah, this is it right here. So robe address, this is the memory address to where it is. So, yeah. And then we're converting it to get the name. So it has skin called with the skin ID, and then it shows the name, Christmas. So this first address is without adding 10. So let me go to Cheat Engine. Let me go to Cheat Engine to show you. Attach to the game, Devour. Let me go to this memory address. Let me go to array of byte. And let me browse this memory region. So right here, you can see you can see these bytes right here. And then you can see Christmas. That's the name of the robe that we unlocked pretty much. But it started at 90. So starting at 90 is right here. Right here there's nothing. You see all those dots right here? There's nothing right here at 90. This is where the the name is starting at 90. Absolutely nothing. Adding 10 
I think I'm guessing this is 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Oh, it's not 10. But I, I don't know how that works. But basically, adding 10 will push you down to the next address. And the next address is what contains the Christmas name, pretty much. The actual name of the robe. And you can see the names of the other robes right here. Yandex. Uh, yeah, other stuff like that. But yeah. So adding 10 basically points you to the name itself. This robe right here, this isn't the name. You add 10 to that, that will give you the name. So yeah, that's what adding 10 does. <clears throat> now let me figure out why Ida gave me the wrong offset. So what did I have before? A, B, C, 0. B, B, C, 0. Ida was a little off, and I'm trying to figure out why. Ooh, flashbang. So this is the correct offset. Where is this? Let me jump to this memory address. Jump address. This is like, is this in the function? Is this like below it? Where is this? Yeah, I have no idea where that is. And edit segments rebase. Maybe I just didn't rebase properly. Or maybe Ida was just wrong. And that happens sometimes. Nope, it fixed it. Okay, I guess. If you get the wrong offset from Ida, just rebase a couple times, and it should work, I guess. I don't know how that happened. That's a little weird. But yeah, 74BBC0. That's the offset for is just rope unlocked. And since it's a bool function, I forgot to mention this earlier, but it's a bool function. Like this one person was asking me. Let me see the comment. Quintuple. When Tuple asked me, is there a possible way to override bool methods and make them return a different value? That's basically what we did here. Bool is robe unlocked. In our hook, you would just create your hook, make sure it's set to bool, not void, and just return true. So I could remove all this code. I could remove all of this code. As long as I have this return true, oh, the game's open, so it's not going to let me compile it. As long as I have this return true, that's basically just the hook. We're making the bool function always return true. It won't check any code, it'll just return true. So let me re reopen the game to show you that it worked. And we're going to re inject. So the function was hooked, and then we get a single player. And outfit and boom everything's still unlocked so returning true is basically answering your question quintuple is there a possible way to override bull methods yeah it is just return true or return false whatever you want to do with it um, I could go into different stuff like field of view but that's easy um, this video is too long anyways I'd, I'd say 20 minutes 20 to 25 minutes is a good length for video and let's see yeah that's about it um, I'll slowly get into more and more stuff I just don't want to get into too much stuff in one video and make it like a really long and boring video but yeah that's about it I'm going to save this If you need Ida Pro, by the way, you know you know you know what to do. You know the the Discord, admin Discord. I'll uh I'll slide you that because Ida is not a free program. Thank you guys for sixty nine subscribers. That's crazy. I may only made two videos and I'm already at sixty nine subscribers. Um. Anyways, peace out. Gotta go upload this. Yeah.